What's up, everybody? It's Joe from Complex. We are here with a special edition of Go Talk for Complex's 20th anniversary, and I am joined by my friend to my right. Sean Evans, the host of Hot Ones. How you doing? Doing great. How long have you been at Complex? I've actually been here for more than 10 years. Wow. And I know that you predate me I because know. I remember being in college, getting the magazine subscription, seeing you. I remember wow. when you went to the uh, Jets training camp. Yes. That's how far back it dates yes. with me. So. Yes, the Jets training camp, I remember, is on like the gray backdrop. It was like I was in a cave. <laughs> yeah. And then here we are sitting together. Listen, look at us, right? <laughs> Who would have thought? You're gonna have a, I know some of the, I know this, some of these answers already, but goat celebrity in your phone. Oh, well, I don't, phone is actually, let's see. I mean, but like all of the classic Hot Ones episodes are kind of in the phone. So I'll just go with one off the top of my head. Uh, Paul Rudd. Oh, in the classic. Phone. Classic. Yeah, what about you? Goat celebrity in my phone. That's a tough one because I feel like throughout the years I had a bunch, but they all changed their numbers as they like yeah, gotten yeah. more famous. So I don't know if it counts. Like I don't. No, yeah, you can grandfather in an old number. Yachty's still in there, which is good. That's Yachty, good. Yeah, new age, new age. Yeah, I would probably say like I think Cuddy was in there at one point, and then throughout the years, like a bunch of green bubbles came up. You know, and I get it, I get it, but. Yeah. Goat guest. So, I mean, the quintessential Hot Ones episode, and he's done it multiple times, and it's just so perfect, is the Gordon Ramsay episode. <laughs> hit me with it, hit me with one. <sighs> okay. That's almost like as known as Hot Ones, so I feel like it would almost be like sacrilege to say anybody else. Love that, love the Christmas special. Thank you. Mine, I always say this, I've said this a lot in interviews, but my favorite like having, you know, it's a show that I created and like, you know, we have like a, holy shit, this is actually happening, so uh, it was 50 Cent. Pick up a pair of shoes, they say $5,000 for the shoes. You go buy a small car. You go buy a, a fucking Chrysler for five thousand dollars. <laughs> Having him on the show and like that episode, the production was like so different than it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him just being like so funny, and me just being a huge fan growing up. Having him on the show was like a big like moment for me. So that would definitely be my goat guest. But like, I love that. you know, I think what we both have is like our personal favorites that you just like remember how great it was, even if they're not the most viewed or like the, the you know, some people think like the most famous may, it's like, for me, like JB Smoove. Scotty had to hold him and lock him like this. Yeah. Now, Scotty would not admit to me. I asked Scotty to his face. I said, Scotty, did you get this shit? He never admitted it. Just an amazing episode and that's one that sticks out. But like, you know, I think we've both been fortunate to have like um, It's, that's been my thing that I'm most proud of in this whole journey is, is, or the thing that I think we can brag about the most and it's justified is the people that we've gotten to Definitely. eat wings and buy sneakers. Absolutely. All right, up next, GOAT bucket list guest. Jerry Seinfeld, I think. He switches sneakers up like every episode of Seinfeld and he wore like such 80s and 90s like heat. And I just think comedians are just so quick in these types of settings, our yeah, shows. Observing sneakers. Yeah, it's stuff. just yeah, their yeah. brain is on a different level. What about you? Well, I went back to my high school a couple weeks ago and all the kids in the hall were just like, kind of just like, so many people were like, Harry Styles, Harry Styles, you have to, mm. you know? And then that has kind of gotten a little bit loud in my life. Okay. But I think the GOAT guest that we haven't had yet is 50 Cent. Like Chris and I, Sarah, we talk all the time about how he's almost made in a lab for a Hot Ones interview. Uh, but so far, yeah, it's been the same sort of uh, yellow, red kind of Man, light that's been popping up. That'd be amazing, 50 someday. Cent. Goat Hot Ones meme. So I think it's between three of them. You have the Shaq face, like the... The best, like the, yep. yeah. like the... Yep. You have uh, Paul Rudd, look at us, who would have thought? Not me. And then the other one is probably like the Idris Alba, like choking on the wing. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh shit. And I would say my favorite of the bunch 
is like the Idris Elba one, like I saw it live, I was in the room, lived through the whole edit, like probably watched it like a million times through that process. And then I've seen it in its second life a million times and I've laughed every single time. Love that. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Goat sneaker shopping meme. Khaled, congratulations. You played yourself. That's timeless. We showed up to Khaled's closet to shoot. I think it was a Saturday. He didn't like the lights that we had. And you know, he's very, oh, no, you have to light the lights. <laughs> so I remember it was like late in the day. He was like, you have to, it was one of the first times he ever showed the closet. I don't, he's, he lives in like a different house now. So he was like, if we're going to do this, you have to like get the lighting right. You have to get the lighting right, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I remember the gear house was like closed and like, we were like, all right, well, Sunday morning we'll go and we'll try to get new different lights, lights. <laughs> different lights, everything. We did it, we go to his house and like, the thing about Khaled that's amazing is like, he could chill when you're, when you're about to like shoot, he could be chilling. And you're like, man, I wonder if his like energy is gonna be up. And then as soon as the camera goes on. I just asked him a simple question. Like there's so many shoes in here, but like, how do you keep track? And if there's any missing, do you notice? And he was like, well, there's a couple pairs missing and uh, we're doing, a, we're, we're launching a street investigation. <laughs> and I was like, you know, and he goes, if I ever find that person, I'm gonna give them back to, he, I'm gonna hand him back the shoes and say, congratulations, you played Thanks. yourself. And like you said about Idris, yeah. we knew, we all just started hysterically <laughs> laughing. So that that's definitely my favorite. Goat episode of your show. I think like the Gordon Ramsay one is the most quintessential sort of like hot ones viewing, like the most representative episode of the show ever made. But an episode that I don't think gets enough love, but it's like so perfect and I love it so much is the Trick Daddy episode. Mm. Classic. Yes it is, god damn. How long ago was that? It was early on. I remember we flew out to Miami for that one and I remember him walking in and me immediately going, this is not gonna be a good shoot because mm -hmm. it was just, very low, did not want to be there at all. But then it was one of those things where by wing two, you can see his shoulders kind of settle in. And then now he's like super engaged with the whole thing. And uh, if anybody is in the meme economy or like creates these mm -hmm. things, go to that episode, how you doing Miss Parker it needs to pop up the way that like, look at us, look at us, who would have thought not me does. When you walk in somebody's house, your mama taught you, speak. Just come by, you eating a pussy, Oh, how you doing, Miss Miss Parker? Goat complex cover. Goat complex cover. All right, let me think about it for a second. <sighs> Bloodied up Bieber is a pretty good complex cover. You did that story, didn't you? Yeah, it's right here. We didn't plan it. This one's special to me because this was the first time I, I ever was out of the country. 2012, like the first time, and it was like, you're going to Cannes to profile Bieber. It was an anxiety-filled trip, but I remember the access was fucking awesome. <laughs> the access was amazing. I went to an award show with him overseas. I distinctly remember he had the Taz Arnold MCM leather baby blue jacket, and we were like backstage. And he was like, I'm the only one who has this jacket right now, and he was young. I was just like shadowing him for the whole night, and I walked the red carpet with him, and the red carpet wasn't like a little step and repeat. It was like a long, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> like, I forgot I was like overseas, anything like that. I just remember the plane ride home. I was like very excited that I got the story. Also still having like a little bit of anxiety, and I listened to Lana Del Rey's first album on the flight. <laughs> like, just like, all right, I made it, but I am still feel a little weird, and I just like played that kind of, yeah, Lana's, Lana's first album on the, on the flight home, <laughs> which is like 36,000 feet in the air, it's a lot. Goat YouTuber. All right, well, you know, maybe it's like a recency bias, but I actually think, because anytime we have somebody from YouTube on the show, I always binge their channel, is uh, Mark Rober. Like, and I just watched this mm. morning, he did like another like Squirrel Olympics thing. And the videos, the effort, the production, the pacing, the editing, like how they come out, like he is very good at what he does. So I'll go on a recency bias, Mark Rober, but it changes for me like every few months. Okay. How about you? I would say I like, I like consume a lot of content. So there's not like one, I like the shows and the formats and the like- The algorithm I, is Yeah, yeah but just, just like, I like the shows that people have created. I think if I had to single like one, 
person. It might have been like Casey, probably. Yeah. Like Casey, I think, just like changed. Legend. Yeah, yep. changed changed everything. And you know, he was like an early adopter, so. Yeah, no shame in that. Yeah, and this guy to my right. <laughs> For real. I'm in the shadow of your history, I feel like, around here. I don't know, I think there's more, more hot sauce than sneakers here. <laughs> Goat baseball player. I mean, the best baseball player I've ever seen with my eyes is Barry Bonds. It's like, you know, first take. Whatever. Talking about it, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's just but he's true. Yeah. It's just like yeah. with your eyes, the greatest baseball player I ever saw in my life was Barry Bonds. If I want to play it straight on that question, though, then the best baseball player of my life that I saw with my eyes was Ken Griffey Jr. That's a solid answer. I don't know, go like the best. I'm going to just answer my favorite, Daryl Strawberry. Daryl Strawberry, I was a huge Mets fan growing up. I remember when he got traded to the Dodgers, my mom woke me up. I was like, hey, I have some bad news for you. And I was like, what happened? Like, is everyone all right? She's like, Daryl Strawberry got traded to the Dodgers. I like cried <laughs> in the twin bed. Daryl Strawberry definitely, Daryl Strawberry is definitely my GOAT uh, baseball player. GOAT interviewer. I'm torn because I was very much growing up. I know I was, who you're going to say. I know, I know you. You do? Yeah. All right, on the count of three, let's say it together. One, two, three. Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Was it? I don't know if I'd be doing what I'm doing now if it wasn't for Howard Stern, if it wasn't for David Letterman. Mm -hmm. And then if, if honestly, if it wasn't for two guests that we've had on Hot Ones before, Adam Carolla and Jimmy Kimmel. Like, I feel like the mark of a good interviewer is when you sit through someone who you don't know or don't otherwise care about. And I felt like I did that most often with Howard. I feel like I am not a, that attached to like one, you yeah. know what I mean? Letterman, I think, yeah. is great. And I like watching the old clips now. Like, Letterman has a YouTube channel and they just put up old clips. It's amazing. I watch mm -hmm. it like every day. It hits so well now. Like, it's actually like aged so well. Goat GIF you've given. I'll call this my greatest gift. One, a Christmas a few years ago, I got my dad like this diamond wine club where they like send him four bottles a month that are all graded like 99 or higher or whatever. Cause I know that he'd never go out and like get this for himself. And uh, he's retired and likes a nice glass of wine on a Friday night. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, I'm gonna get him this wine club. And then he loves it so much. And I feel like it's such a good gift because you don't just give it to somebody during the holidays and then it's just like a holiday thing. Like the subscription hits on the first of every month. So it's like constantly reminding my dad yeah. of my love for him, you know? So it's I feel like, like that's a good gift. I don't know if you get this, like I get this. Does anyone ever come up to you like, oh, you're like the hot wing guy? Like if they yeah, don't know? Every so like, day. That, yeah. I get, they go, they, this happens to me all day, every day. Yeah. Like I'll just see somebody look and they'll go, are you the guy from Hot Wings? Yeah, like they'll yeah. get like the name wrong yeah. and stuff. And like loudly while I'm like standing in line at TSA or some, something like that. So yeah. like, yeah, I, I get that nonstop. So it's like, the soundtrack of my life. Exactly. So like I was at a birthday party like two weeks ago and they were like, oh, you're like the sneaker guy, right? And like this answer is going to be very sneaker guy. My friend Ronnie recently had like a new baby and it's like one of those people who you don't know what could like you get for like the baby, like who has everything, you yeah, know? Right. Uh, but I've been like a cheat code for me recently with my friends who are like having like kids. I've been like finding these Instagram like resellers who don't like have hype shoes, but like have like original baby shoes like stocked. And I got Ronnie's daughter pair 1985 Chicago ones and they're like this big. It's like, that's been like my cheat code recently, like gifts like that, yeah. Goat TV show to binge. The Office, just because, like, no matter what mood, like Michael Scott, my favorite <laughs> character. It's like, you yeah, know how yeah. people leave Sports Center on, like, in the background of whatever they're doing? The Office, like, I would have no problem just having that on, like, 24 7. Yeah, and, and I get that now, because we had Ed Helms on a season or two ago. So I was like, oh, I'm going to check out, I'm going to rewatch, like, season three of The Office, like, when he entered and kind of catch, like, 
the vibe and what it was like at that time, maybe there's a question there about it. Mm. And then I started watching it, and it really is the funniest show. It's like, the best. It's nonstop. I get why it's like the comfort show for everybody. I was just gonna watch a couple episodes in season three, then like, it's like, oh, I forgot how good this show is. Went back to season one and like rewatched the whole series. I'm more likely to binge a YouTube channel, like a YouTube channel that mm -hmm. I can't stop binging is this this channel called Cart Narcs, and it's these guys. They wear vests and like GoPros, and they walk out in their, like the parking lot of a Ralphs or a Walmart or a Costco or whatever, and then they shame people who don't return their shopping carts. Wow. And it's an amazing, <laughs> it's just an amazing just like study of how we interact with each other because they always go off the rails. It's like, boop, 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 that's not where the carts go. Mm. And then that always triggers like this, this confrontation that never stops escalating. And it's all over just taking your cart back wow. to the cart return. Genius so, idea. I can't stop watching that channel. Cart Narcs is a great channel. Goat rapper. Jay-Z. Jay-Z is a goat rapper, I think. All right, I'm gonna say somebody, maybe not my goat rapper, but just somebody who doesn't get in this conversation enough, but should, because this artist has just insane miles on my headphones if I look at it in aggregate over Harry the course Styles? of my life. DMX. Okay. I remember one time I played on the baseball team in high school. We traveled out to some game in Gray's Lake, and that day somebody went down to the locker room, cut all of the locks, and then stole everybody's like fossil watches and CD players and whatever, right? Yeah. And uh, the person got caught, and they were just sitting on like a giant treasure trove of portable CD players and watches and whatnot. So they were able to gather all of these things, but then it was about returning them. And I remember I had to go down to like the resource officer and I'm sitting there with like some police officer and they're like, well, what do you have? And I was like, it's a black Sony disc man. And then yep. they're like, well, what CD was in there? And I remember going, uh, DMX, it's dark and hell is hot. And the uh, <laughs> police officer just goes, <sighs> and, like reached over and handed the, uh, handed the uh, CD player back. To that's, me, a, so. that's a great choice. Two more. Goat album. All right. Uh, I'll go off the top of my head without thinking about it too much, an album that I just wore the shit out of at a very particular time in my life, uh, Slim Shady LP. Get Rich or Die Trying for me. Yeah. Just like, was such a big fan of the mixtapes and it's like, how many, how often do they live up to the hype of like when the official album drops? A lot of times you're disappointed. The 50 Cent mixtapes would just be playing in the finish line stockroom on loop, like eight hour shifts, <laughs> 10 hour shifts. And it's like, what is he gonna do when he actually drops the album? And like for him to deliver a classic in my mind, get Richard Die trying, I would, I would say. Oh, all right, well this is good for you, Goat Sneaker. Goat Sneaker. Bread Jordan 4, somewhere over here. Here it is, Black Cement 3 is there was a pair I had, I had to like change the insoles like four different times. I remember anything, any significance like in terms of work, I would wear, it was like my uniform and I always felt like the Bieber cover story overseas. I definitely like to interview Pharrell the first time. So Black Cement 3s were like my favorite for a while. And then I started loving the Bread 4s which are these right here, just because I think fours are my favorite model yeah, now. Yeah, same with me. Fours are probably my favorite. You, you know, your grail, you got on sneaker shopping the cause yeah, fours. I did. Yeah, yeah, but that's why, because I the four is my favorite Jordan silhouette ever, and then like those shoes I've loved, and it's like so my style, like monochromatic, yeah. and it's gray, and I was like, I always loved those shoes. Could never justify it, but you know, when you're on a show, put on a show. You know, but I always thought the best Jordan shoe was maybe that cement three. That's it, black cement I don't know three. If, yeah. White cement or black cement? Black cement three. That's That was like, my, before this one, it was the black cement three for so long. But otherwise, I defer all uh, sneaker consultation to you. Mm, and that's why listen, you've been a good friend. I feel like I that's know, why you've been a good friend. I feel like I know your style too. You do, you do. Yeah, so. All right, listen, a bunch of questions. Yeah, it was actually fun to kind of unpackage all of that time and all of that history. I'll Listen, think about these things all day. I know it's been a, it's been a long road even for for both of us and for Complex. Twenty years, we appreciate everyone sticking with Complex for twenty years. Go talk with my man Sean Evans. That's a wrap. <laughs>